Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Chemistry Essentials video 49. It's on the conservation of energy. If you've ever done any calculations or reading on energy, you've noticed that there's a unit named the Joule, and that's named after this guy right here, James Prescott Joule. And he came up with this really innovative way to look at energy transfer. And so in this apparatus right here, what we have is a weight, and that weight is lifted off the ground. So there's a string attached to it. We have to crank this string all the way up like that. And then we eventually have this weight at a given height. And so what it has at this point is potential energy, gravitational potential energy. And so what Joule is looking at is how how can we convert that to uh, changes in temperature? Or how do we get that energy transfer through heat? And so what happens is as this weight falls, what it's doing is it's spinning these blades that are in water, and the friction of that spinning of those blades in the water is increasing the temperature. And so what he was able to do is make measurements as to how that mechanical energy um, or that work of that falling weight is actually transferred into temperature changes. And so if we're ever talking about conservation, a good way to think about that is a teeter-totter. And so we've got a before and an after. And so if we've got two systems, so system one and system two, the amount of the energy that they have before interacting with each other has to be exactly the same as the energy that they have after. And so in a closed system, in other words, if we're looking in just isolation at these two systems, system one and system two, if system one has more energy than system two, then we're going to transfer that energy from one to two. And so the energy is going to be conserved. Now, that energy could be energy transferred through heat or it could be energy transferred through work. So the amount of energy we have before and after has to be equal or it has to be conserved. So before and after that interaction, the amount of energy has to be conserved. So again, system one had more energy to begin with than system two. There was energy being transferred, but the overall energy that we had had to stay the same. And so where could we apply this? Well, look no farther than driving a car. And so where is most of the energy in a car that drives that car? Well, that energy go is going to be in chemical energy, chemical energy of the gasoline. So in those bonds, we have a certain amount of stored energy. And as we release that through combustion, what we're going to do is transfer that energy into different forms. And so it's all chemical energy to begin with. But as that car moves, where are we transferring that energy into? Well, we're transferring a lot of it into mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is driving the piston in that internal combustion engine, driving the crankshaft, driving the drivetrain, it's moving the wheels, and it's moving that car. Now, if you've ever put your hand on an engine, you'll notice that it's really hot. So we're also converting a lot of energy into heat. Um, there's also probably electrical energy inside there. We have light energy perhaps that's being transferred. And so that amount of energy that we had before and the amount of energy that we have at the end has to be conserved. We don't either create nor destroy energy. And so if we go back to our teeter-totter again, the amount of energy we had before was mostly chemical energy but it's being converted into mechanical work. So we're driving that drivetrain, driving that car, moving that car. We're also transferring a lot of that energy through heat. We're also producing maybe electrical and light energy. But if we look on either side, before and after, the amount of energy that we have has to be conserved. And so did you learn to relate the magnitude, how big it is, the type and the direction of that energy transfer? Remember, when I'm talking about type, I'm either talking about energy transfer through heat or energy transfer through work. And then have you learned this idea of conservation, that the amount of uh, energy that we have before and after have to be exactly the same? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.